Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Metroid Prime. I'm the 10th enemy. If you'll remember in the last episode, uh, I got the ice beam. So now, after you get this, you actually want to go in this tunnel here, which is right in the save station actually. So it can be tricky to like know where it is, but it is pretty obvious in there. So go through there, and this will take you to the Talon Overworld. Actually, it's a place in the Overworld that we haven't seen yet. Now, I have to say, for one thing, this episode is going to be a little choppy. <laughs> not not graphically, but I'm going to have to, you know, cut things out and stuff. Here's these guys here that you can't kill without missiles. But there's going to be a lot of backtracking in this episode, and I'm going to do my best to cut that. But I realized in the last episode, the backtracking, or not the back, the cut I did may have been kind of a dickish thing to do if, if, if some beginners are following along here with me. Uh, people who haven't played the game before, because you might, it's, it's pretty obvious in that one. Of course, here's a missile expansion, but that's obvious too. But with that one, it was pretty obvious how to get from that that uh, elevator back to the beginning of Chozo Ruins. But from from now on, I think I'm gonna when I cut things, I'm gonna show you on the map what I'm gonna be doing. Yeah, these are just flying pirates. Yeah. I think I'm gonna show that on the map. So whenever I backtrack, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you exactly what I do. But here's a good tactic for the ice beam. You want to freeze the enemies, and then you want to shoot them with a missile. There's some guys down there, some dudes. Oh, crap. <laughs> they actually fly away if you shoot, if you shoot them, but I think I may have... Just screwed that up. Now you can't see them, but they should be flying off into the distance. But they were over here at this little crate, or whatever it is. Some blue stuff there. I'm pretty sure you probably know what that is by now. If you read this, it'll say... Uh, it's highly toxic, and of course it says it's Phazon. That's what they're using for their experiment. So that's what that blue crap is, and it's the same thing that the Chozo are calling the Great Poison, which has been corrupting all of the creatures on this planet. You know, changing them into the violent things we see today. Now, you'll see here I'm back at the landing site. So now I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it. So, to get back, what I'm actually going to do is go up through here, and I'm going to go through the root cave. That's the root tunnel. The little one's the root tunnel. And back to Magmore Caverns, and from there, <laughs> uh, that will actually lead right there in Magmore Caverns. And then I'm going to go all the way back through here. You've seen all of this already and go right to Fendrana, right there. That's the fight after Thardis. So, I'm gonna do that, and I will meet you back in... somewhere. I don't know. I'll decide where, but... See you then! Okay guys, I'm back for a minute here. I just wanna show you this. Here's a strategy you can use in Fendra or uh, Magmore, you can actually freeze these fire shooters. That's just something I wanted to show you because I might not get another opportunity. But it's actually pretty useful over here. And that's just something you can do now that you have the ice beam. And in general, it's also very useful in Magmore Caverns. So, with that being said, uh, probably shouldn't have cut in here, 
because I still have a little ways to go, but not too far. Maybe I'll just keep talking, because I'm almost there anyways. But, uh, it doesn't matter anyways if I keep talking, because I can still cut it out anyway, so. So here we have it. These guys, oh, you can kill them. <laughs> so you can kill them with the wave beam. Here's another one of those things I can freeze. Yeah, there's one thing about this game that I just, I don't really like about the doors. Oh, and hold that thought a second. It, these pirates, they'll dodge it a lot, but a more cost-effective strategy than super missiles is actually use the ice beam to freeze them and then hit them with one missile, which works on many, many enemies in the game and also in other Metroid games. So you want to keep that in mind. But as I was saying, the doors, I really think it should be, uh, Ice Beam should be able to open purple doors. That's what I think. I think that the higher beam should be able to open all of the lower doors. Just for gameplay reasons, I know it doesn't make sense with what these are supposed to be. They're like blast shields, but so here's what, here's where we were intending to go. This elevator will take us to actually a new area in Fendrana Drifts. And blah blah blah, here we are. So this will look really familiar. This was after we fought Thardis, and I pointed out this magnetic track. Now let's use it. And here's why we couldn't get past here was, of course, because we didn't have the ice beam. And, uh, this whole area, it blew my mind when I first played this game. This whole new area of Fendrana opened up, and the crazy music kicked in, and it was awesome. Alright. So this is the Frozen Pike, I believe, yes. Now, if you go in this door down here... That will actually connect you with the Space Pirate Research Lab, which is right there. That's where I got the thermal visor. But it's not necessary. It's just a nice little shortcut, I guess. It's never necessary that you go in there. And there are tons of these bat thingies here. But let's try to avoid those and go in this door. This is definitely where we need to go. Oop. <laughs> I just thought this whole area was so incredible when I first played this game. I think this is one of the reasons why people think that Fendrana Drifts is the best area in the game. Probably for this area. Oh, you know, it was already this awesome place, and then... And then it opened up to this other quite mysterious area. So, uh, in here... Oh, wow! I forgot about this guy! Alright, this is actually a Hunter Metroid, which is supposed to be a more dangerous Metroid, but they're actually less frightening, actually, because they don't, like, grab onto you or anything. They just, they're like squid, really. So, you kill them like any other Metroid. You freeze them, shoot them with a missile. I wish they made Metroids a bit more threatening in this game, but they didn't. And uh, here... Glider. These... They are not enemies. Uh, it says that we can use the grapple beam, and we don't have anything called a grapple beam, but apparently the grapple beam is effective on them, so we'll keep that in mind. I don't know if I scanned stalactites or not. I honestly don't know, and I don't care. I, I'm not going for a hundred percent scans. I'm just scanning everything that I see that I know is a scan, just to try and flesh out the, I guess, the story or the world to make it seem more lifelike. So in here is a save room. I'm not going to use it, of course, because I only save at the end of videos, so things don't get massively screwed up. 
And this is the part I always think of. I always think of this tunnel here. It just feels like you're going so incredibly far into this planet when you go through this tunnel. Even though it's not that far. I just always like that. And more flying pirates. These guys are always a pain. Always. <laughs> Look at that. This one's dive bombing. Alright, so this right here is Fendrana's edge. Literally the edge of Fendrana drifts. There's no... We can't keep going. So now we actually want to go into the water. These guys are hurting me. These are called uh, gel zaps, I believe. I'm gonna scan the other one. But you kill them with a charge shot from any beam when they open up. Gel zap. <sighs> so they're, they're kind of like clams, but they look like fish. But they got these two like shell halves and uh, it's connected by this like muscle that connects the two, just like a clam or a muscle or anything like that. Any any one of those edible uh, bi bisected uh, mollusks. What is that called? It's a bi something. Bi. It's not a biped. What is that? Oh, I don't know. I used to know. I used to know what those were called. You know what I'm talking about. Scallops, clams, mussels, oysters, those sort of things. There's a name for them. If I ever scan the... yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've been scanning the pickups. Like the big energies and the ultra energies and stuff. I'm probably not gonna... Well, now that I said it, I might remember. This room is full of these, uh... Little bat things. You wanna again? Huh. Maybe there isn't a research for these. And that will of course crush the gel zaps. Which I think is awesome. I love that. Before you jump down here, you're probably going to want to try to take out these flicker bats. There no, no, I don't think there is. They can be tricky without a certain upgrade that I don't have. Oh, come on. Well, I could take my chances. Jump down there. Oh, I missed anyways. What are you doing? Yeah, the gel zaps will actually... They're like magnetic or something. They... they they suck you in like a magnet. So you gotta be really careful. Okay, we made it. Ooh! <laughs> Hit me right at the end. Alright. 15 minutes. Well, that equals 10 minutes, doesn't it? From the cut. Maybe even less. So, I guess I'll keep going. I don't know where I'll stop this. Now you come into this giant room. There's a, there's a new enemy. And this one is an Aqua Reaper, similar to the Reaper Vine. They're actually identical, really, except these ones are underwater. Yeah. So there's nothing too special about them. They remind me of the boss from Twilight Princess, or I should say, the boss from Twilight Princess reminds me of these. You know that underwater- Hey! Stop it! Stop that! That really hurts! <laughs> it's enough of you. If you look here, you can see some fish that unfortunately got frozen- Frozen, I said? Frozen, frozen in the ice. They are ugly ones. Too bad for them. We gotta go through another one of these you know, places. These underwater areas always frightened me as a kid. But if you go here, this should look familiar to something we got in the Chozo Ruins. Another one of those Samus icons. 
and of course the same cutscene is repeated again, I think you know what's happening. We're getting a suit upgrade. Very similar to Mega Man. When Mega Man absorbs the power of a boss. Similar animation. But now we're Purple Samus. We've been upgraded. And this is the gravity suit. Basically, it has three effects, I believe. Uh, effect number one, underwater is now no different in terms of movement than above water. So, we can jump, we can move freely in water. It really increases our exploration potential of this planet. How do I get out of here? Okay. Uh, the effect number two is it makes it easier to see underwater, so that that uh, fuzziness is gone. Uh, I don't know how it does that. My best guess is that it incorporates some type of other wavelength into the like a longer wavelength that cuts through the water better. And it uses that, and along with some nice false color. I don't know. There could be a science explanation for that. Sciency explanation, but yeah, my best guess would be like it sees in like red. I don't think infrared goes through water, does it? I'm not sure. Of course, I'm also not sure whether water actually preferably scatters blue. I think it does. I think that's why the sky is blue from the water vapor, but I'm not not a hundred percent sure. But I, if I made the game, I would just use that as my physics for this. And I would make underwater have just slightly more of an amber tint after getting the vision upgrade. Just slightly. That's just me, though. Is these fish look beautiful. Also, here's something you can do. Thermal visor. That is beautiful, isn't it? Is it not? Look at all them fish. So many fish. Okay, that's enough of that. Wasting time. So uh, now you actually want to leave. You want to leave the frozen pike. Or, or the, you want to leave this whole area, actually. And I'm not sure what I should do now. Uh, there's two options I have. I'm going to cut the video, of course. As a after I get out of this area, because I want to show you how to exit this place. It can be a little tricky. But I think, let's see, I'm up to 20 minutes, so... Let's say I cut 8 minutes out of it, and then... Oh, I really don't know. This is why I don't like cutting. Because I don't know how long it will actually end up being. Now, I... I think this episode and the next one they may be shorter just because if you know what's coming up I want to start the gauntlet as its own thing I'm not going to spoil what exactly the gauntlet is until I get there but you maybe know what I'm talking about if you're familiar with this game but I definitely want that to be its own thing the right door yeah so uh hmm yeah I think I want to actually stop the video yeah I'm, I'm gonna stop it when I get to actually I'm gonna go back to Talon Overworld so this you can officially take this as the end of the video if you want I'm going to keep playing, but it's just going to be backtracking. Uh, if you want to know how to navigate this area, <laughs> then go ahead and keep watching, I guess. Uh, if you're not quite sure how to get through this place. But, but this can officially be the end of the video, so if you're departing now, I'll say thanks for watching. I've been the 10th enemy. Goodbye. And if you want to stick it out, 
stick it out with me here. And we'll just be backtracking through Magmore. And, uh, yeah. This is, of course, n there's nothing interesting is going to happen, but, you know, I'm going to do it, so why don't you watch with me? I don't know. This is the geothermal core. Oh, I do that again. You do it again, man. Open up. All right. I don't think people can fault me for recording backtracking if it's at the end of the video and I say you can leave, right? Like if I backtrack before I do interesting stuff then you can say that's a flaw. But as it stands now this is just like a bonus. This is like a boring bonus for anyone who wants to uh... I don't know, anyone who likes me I guess likes my awesome voices. I don't know. I couldn't imagine. I personally think my voice is kind of annoying. But I think everyone does. What's your opinion? My Rate my annoyingness on a scale of 1 to 10. Would you? Would you please? And another secret loading screen. Oh my goodness. Well, I got nothing to say. What the hell? Uh, I'm watching a Let's Play of Aladdin, actually. Some Someone, like, subscribed to me and I went and checked out their channel. Actually, not bad. A bit too much of the old, I'm going here, I'm going this, but when you're doing live commenty, co commenty, yes, when you're doing live commenty, that is, that is very hard to actually avoid that, I think. It's better if you do, like, post commentary, and you can actually think of things to say. A lot of people don't like post commentary, some people think it's superior, but... You know, I do that too. I do the narration thing too. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but that is pretty boring. I can't remember his name. Hmm. Can't remember. I wish I could. Well, I actually do have my computer right next to me. I could look it up, but I don't know. Oh, I can't remember. Did I get this thing here? I usually forget about this upgrade. I think I got it. I think. Yeah, I did. I got it. Alright. In the next episode, we go through there. But now, since it's over, you know, anyone who's watched until here, and I don't know why you would, but thanks for watching. I didn't mention about the ship. Uh... I'll be scanning that next time. I didn't mention about the ship. It actually refills your missiles as well as your health and saves your game. So it's like a, it's a better save point. So thanks for watching. I've been the 10th enemy. And goodbye. Alright. Goodbye.